Hello, my name is Kerry Davies with Optical Building Blocks Corporation and today we're going to introduce you to our Quattro Spectrofluorometer. The Quattro is an integrated benchtop spectrofluorometer um, that is able to do scanning spectral measurements as well as time-based phosphorescence measurements. It's extremely easy to use, it's extremely fast, and it's extremely sensitive and we're really excited to introduce you to this new spectrofluorometer. The Quattro Spectrofluorometer is equipped with a pulse xenon arc lamp this is a 1 microsecond pulse, 150 kilowatt peak power lamp, and that light is delivered through a 250 millimeter um, focal length monochromator. This monochromator has excellent stray light rejection, excellent accuracy, very good spectral resolution. That is delivering our excitation light to the sample. The sample, which is now emitting phosphorescence or fluorescent signals in all directions, that light is collected down a detection channel and the emitted light is also passing through another 250 millimeter focal length monochromator. And from that monochromator, the light is delivered to our unique analog detection PMT. All Quattro spectrofluorometers use uh, a red enhanced PMT that has detection from about 185 to 900 nanometers. And every Quattro also has uh, order sorting filter wheel for rejection of second and third orders uh, through the monochromators for highly scattering samples. Of course, because the Quattro is able to measure spectra and also time resolve phosphorescence for phosphorescence emitting samples, we can also gate out any unwanted scatter. So a unique capability of this instrument is the ability for highly scattering samples in the case of studying rare earths and long-lived phosphorescence, being able to literally gate out and never have to worry about um, scattering effects. We spent a lot of time um, really developing what we believe is the best technology um, available to provide a really a new instrument that's really going to provide unique benefits, unique capabilities that aren't available with any other benchtop fluorometer. So a lot of work went into the hardware and the software and the development of this product. In addition, however, though, we've also tried to put a lot of information on our website so that uh, potential investigators who might be interested in the instrument could learn an awful lot about it. So uh, here is the home page for Optical Building Blocks Corporation for the Quattro Spectrofluorometer. And um, if you do go to our website, uh, you'll see here that we have a ton of information about uh, the specifications of the instrument, um, the technology that's behind the instrument, uh, all of the years of experience that we have in developing this. And, uh, and so I do encourage people to take a good look at, at the uh, website and learn as much as you can about our instrument. Key features of the Quattro Spectrofluorometer. Firstly, it's the most sensitive spectrofluorometer in its class. Uh, it is able to measure um, down to about five uh, femtomolar fluorescein, and uh, that's just a number that really uh, is not attainable typically with an integrated benchtop fluorometer. You really have to get a very large modular research fluorometer to achieve that level of sensitivity. However, we're able to do that with the Quattro. Another real key feature of the instrument is extremely fast. The monochromators scan very, very quickly, um, and the detection system is quite unique. It is able to detect uh, phosphorescence decays from a single flash, a single flash of the one microsecond pulse xenon lamp. So in this way, we're able to really have the instrument collect data more quickly than is possible with any other instrument, whether it's simply a scanning spectra or whether you want to actually collect a phosphorescence decay or you want to combine spectra and decay, you can do it really faster with a Quattro than was ever possible before. The Quattro also has a couple of unique capabilities not available with any other instrument. In particular, we have the ability to measure and collect phosphorescence decays as a function of time. We call it lifetime-based reaction kinetics. We really feel that this is a technology uh, and an opportunity for people to develop assays based on rare earths and other long-lived probes um, that are now um, decay-based rather than intensity-based. And uh, I think that there's going to be uh, some very interesting developments with this technology, and you just simply can't do that with any other spectrofluorometer. So here we're showing you the specifications page of the Quattro website. Uh, we're showing some of the data that we've collected off of this instrument, and we show the intrinsic sensitivity of it. Um, the ability to collect from 5 femtomolar fluorescein, a detection limit that really is not achievable with a, uh, a simple integrated benchtop fluorometer. We're also showing on our website here a data set that was collected where we're actually measuring phosphorescence decay as a function of wavelength. 
and with the sensitivity of the instrument and the speed of the hardware and the detection electronics, we're able to actually capture an entire three-dimensional matrix in only a few seconds. Really can't be done with any other technology that's out there now. This is our Quattro software. It's um, very powerful, simple, easy to use software, very complete, and, um, and we're going to show you how we can collect data uh, with the Quattro and analyze it as well. Um, this software is really extremely simple to operate. It allows you to acquire a variety of different kinds of fluorescence and phosphorescence uh, spectra or decays. You can see here from the pull down, there's a lot of choices that are available to you, but primarily the instrument is designed to look at spectra, typically fluorescent spectra, but it can also be phosphorescent spectra because we're using a gated approach. Um, it's also able to do time domain based studies, so we can measure phosphorescence decays, measuring how long the sample stays in the excited state before it drops down into the ground state. And again, as well, we can see here the ability to do three-dimensional mapping, spectra against spectra, spectra against lifetime, um, virtually anything that the customer might choose to do. Okay, so now we're gonna actually run a couple of experiments, run a couple of spectra um, with a sample that we have here. This is a terbium. It's a very common rare earth. It's in solution in a cuvette. And we're just gonna put it in our cuvette holder inside the sample compartment and we're just gonna set up and do an experiment. Now there are a lot of things that can be done with the software. There's many options and a lot of things that can be uh, adjusted and parameters that can be uh, tweaked. However, I just wanted to demonstrate first just how easy it is to use the instrument. And so with this particular instrument, we have a setup um, that's been prepared and we can just simply hit scan and it's going to do an emission spectrum of terbium. So in this case, the software is auto-scaling uh, to fully show the entire spectra as it goes, and it gives you a real-time display of the, in this case, the emission spectrum of terbium. In addition to collecting spectra, steady-state spectra, fluorescence and phosphorescence spectra, the Quattro is able to make time-resolved measurements because it's using a pulse xenon lamp and a very fast a gated analog detection system, we're able to do time resolve studies of long-lived phosphorescence on the order of a few microseconds to a few hundred milliseconds. So right now we're gonna actually do a quick uh, decay measurement of this same sample. Um, here I'm gonna actually now open up a setup panel on the screen, and in this setup panel we're basically able to adjust all of the parameters or virtually any kind of a luminescence experiment that we're interested in doing. In this case, we want to actually acquire a phosphorescence decay, which has been selected, and we're going to excite at 270 nanometers, and we're going to collect emission at 554. We've set the lamp frequency to run at 500 hertz, and in this case, we've asked it to collect a decay uh, that results from 500 flashes of that xenon lamp. So this acquisition time, the entire acquisition time, should only be one second. The rest of the parameters we're gonna leave as they are, and we just simply, having set that up, close this setup window, and then simply hit scan. And you can see that the system acquired that decay really quickly. In only one second, we got a very good looking decay um, that here is um, uh, measured, and immediately as it collects data, it also reports at the very top uh, a measured uh, fluorescence lifetime. In this case, 422 microseconds with a chi-squared, which is a goodness of fit measurement uh, of just a little over one, so it's a very good fit. However, I wanted to also demonstrate um, just how fast this instrument really is. So we've collected this really good looking decay in only one second. Already that's faster than most phosphorimeters will ever do. However, um, if we go back to the setup panel, we can actually for number of pulses, just choose only one pulse. We've, what we're saying is we only want to flash the lamp once, we want to collect the entire decay curve that results from that one single microsecond flash. When we hit scan, we didn't really hear it, but a single pulse of that xenon lamp, and you see we basically still have collected the same decay curve. Um, so in the case of a strong signal, a fairly robust signal and a high quantum yield, 
we can actually collect a decay as fast as really only a microsecond of acquisition time. All right, so we've just collected a phosphorescence decay. Uh, now we're going to do an emission excitation matrix, sometimes called EAMS. And uh, this is where we're going to now sequentially scan the excitation and the emission monochromator and look at the three-dimensional spectral structure of this particular sample. In order to do that, we simply go again to the setup panel, adjust the wavelength range across which we want to scan the excitation and the emission monochromators, uh, make a few other adjustments to the uh, uh, detection parameters, and then go to the acquisition selection panel. We're going to do a 3D mapping this time, and we're just going to hit scan. So here we're collecting an emission spectrum uh, at a variety of different excitation wavelengths. It's reporting the uh, three-dimensional construct in real time for us. This is a monochromator-based system. These are very large, very high resolution, uh, very accurate uh, monochromators, 250 millimeter length monochromators. So it's actually doing a really good job of scanning this entire um, uh, matrix uh, really very quickly. Having collected the data now, the user can interrogate that and look at it in the emission wavelength plane, in the excitation wavelength plane, or as is quite often reported, um, looking directly down on the data, uh, looking at both X, Y, and where those wavelengths all cross over. So again, for phosphorescence-based samples, um, not only can we collect uh, these EMs, the three-dimensional uh, matrices of excitation versus emission wavelengths, we can also collect excitation or emission wavelength as a function of a decay, as a function of time. And so we're going to do an acquisition now, uh, in this case, where we uh, adjust the setup parameters not to do a 3D mapping, but to do what we call 3D emission, where we are assuming now we're scanning the emission monochromator and we're going to collect uh, versus phosphorescence decay on the microsecond time scale. So we set up the parameters for this particular protocol, close the setup button. Um, we're now going to select 3D emission as our acquisition uh, choice and just simply hit scan. Here you can see we've actually collected a number of decay curves at a variety of different emission wavelengths. We've done it only in the matter of a few seconds, and we've collected really a lot of uh, quite useful information. Uh, we're now looking at decay as a function of emission wavelength. And again, it can be displayed in a variety of different ways. So having collected a variety of different types of data sets for this particular sample, we can still, um, uh, the software retains all of the information uh, and all of that data. So we can, again, select phosphorescence decay, look at the time-based decay curves that we had collected earlier. We can also look at emission wavelengths. The spectra that we've collected are still there, and also the uh, three-dimensional mappings. So when we go to save the data for this particular experimental setup, all of that information is saved with, uh, with the uh, Quattro software. Quattros are delivered as a complete instrument. Um, there's no installation that's required. You just simply open up the box, take out the instrument, put it on your bench top. There's two USB cables that connect to your computer. Hook them up and away you go. It really couldn't get any easier. It's auto calibrating. Uh, there's really nothing for you to adjust or to worry about. Um, the basic unit comes with a cuvette holder um, that is uh, water jacketed so that it can be hooked up to an external water bath and you can then uh, adjust the temperature for solution-based samples. However, we do have other sample holder accessories. We have a Peltier-based uh, cuvette holder. The Peltier-based cuvette holder actually is in this particular instrument, and that allows for software-controlled uh, temperature. Um, it's primarily useful for protein folding folks that are looking at uh, melting studies, but any experiment where you want to do automated acquisitions at uh, controlled temperatures um, the Peltier accessory is um, highly uh, recommended. We also have sample holders for working with um, various kinds of solids. So we have a, a powder sample holder accessory. 
and a solid sample holder accessory. So you can pretty much work with any kind of a film, flat surface, irregular surface, um, powders, um, uh, cover slip based samples, uh, virtually anything else can be adjusted, uh, looked at with these. And lastly as well, we have accessories in the instrument which are um, automated polarizers, if you're interested in studying rotational effects, um, then we have automated quartz and automated film polarizers. This instrument is actually equipped with them and they're already uh, installed in the instrument and uh, ready to go and the user just simply has to uh, slide across a little track inside the sample compartment and put the polarizer in place for use or pull it out of place when you're not using it. It's a very, very simple thing to work with. That concludes our demonstration of the Quattro Spectrofluorometer. Feel free to visit our website to learn more about the instrument or certainly give us a call if you have any questions at all. Thank you for your time. Bye now.